kartą į pilkį truputėlę. Ne, gal... Nes jisai dabar žmonės kalbėjo daug. Jisai dabar po spaudos konferencijos. Au. Tai visai gerai būtų į kurkšnelį. Labai dieną, labai džiaugiuosi, kad jūs matydumėt šią susirinkusius universitetą bendruomenės svečius, narius ir svečius. Ir šiandien tikrai labai džiaugsminga diena. Tai rodo jūsų veidai, mes turim ypatingą svečią, jo šventenybę 14 Dalai Lama, kuris mum papasakos apie žmogiškasias vertybės šio laikinime pasaulyje. Sveikinu visus atvykusius ir sveikinu jo šventenybę. Žodį suteikiu jam. Jūs kam šia. Nu, nu, nu. Jau kolinės, audienas jūs. O, jūs, o, jūs, o, jūs. So, I think a few minutes I want to speak from stand. I can see your face better. And also I can, uh, I can watch whether there is any person who sleep. <laughs> so, 
So, brothers and sisters, I always carry the spirit of we are the same human being. All seven billion human beings, we are human brothers, sisters, we are the same. I think today's world, we need, we really need the sense of oneness of seven billion human beings. Otherwise, now today, a lot of problems which human, humanity facing. Besides nature disaster, I think many problems, including killing, is our own creation. Need translation? No need. Hmm? I see. So I want to know those uh, the, among the audience who understand my broken English, raise hand. Ah, very good, very, very good. So now, here I think I feel big contradiction. We seven billion human beings. Nobody want problem. And basic human nature, according to scientists, more compassionate. Yet, a lot of problems created by ourselves. Because our basic nature is more compassionate, but we, you see, neglect about warm heartedness or compassion. Instead that, we too much emphasis. I, 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 I. Uh, and too much sort of emphasis. My own interest. So then don't care about other sort of interest or right. And exploitation, bully, cheating. Even religion, all major religious tradition teach us message of love, message of tolerance, forgiveness. But religion also now causing fighting, killing. Look, Syria, Afghanistan, and some of these areas. Very sad, unthinkable. The various different religious tradition, the essential message is message of love. And theoretical viewpoint, philosophical viewpoint, we all created by one God. So we seven billion human beings, all of us, all of us, all of us is actually children of God. And how can killing each other? Impossible. So therefore, uh, we really, uh, these are truly, I think, big contradiction. We want happiness, basic, our nature is more compassionate, yet we human being, I think out of, I think, almost I think a thousand different species of mammal on this planet, I think we human being, become most troublemaker. In ancient time, okay. I think the Lithuanian. Lithuanian people, you see, within your own country, create some problem here and there. Doesn't matter. <laughs> the whole today's world is a whole world interconnected. So now I think we really need sense of global responsibility on the basis 
We all seven million human beings are the same human being. Physically, emotionally, mentally, we all the same. And most important, we all want happy life. And everyone has the right to achieve happy life. Yet, you see, we create a lot of problems. So I always see carry sort of the desire. The 20th, 20th century become century of violence. First World War, Second World War, and then Korean War, Vietnam War, and including civil war. I think too much suffering. According to some historian, they say number of people who killed through violence are around 200 million. So immense suffering, immense sort of killing. If create a better world, then some people may justify that immense sort of violence. That's not the case. I feel the beginning of the 21st century, still some sort of killing there. These, I feel, the old thinking of 20th century. 20th century, whenever we find some differences, we always or should they, uh, or should they believe use force. Use force can solve problem. That's the whole thing. Outdated. The world become just a small one planet. So we have to think humanity rather than my nation, my sort of religious believer. That's I think outdated. Now we should think the sense of oneness of the hum entire seven human being. Seven, because seven right, human being. And whenever you see we find some differences, you see we should solve these differences through talk, through dialogue. That's the only way. So I usually describe this 21st century now should be a century of dialogue. Our using force is outdated. So therefore, the some nations, you see, including America, are selling weapons. I think that's outdated. You may get some jobs, some money, but actually, the very purpose of bullet, killing, nothing. We cannot eat bullet, bullet. So weapon, I think now this 21st century, in order to create peaceful century, firstly, we have to think seriously how to reduce weapon. Eventually, this world should be demilitarized world. If we have some sort of different views and need sort of fighting, and we equipped this Kasa Dimindi. Sorry, we can fight, <laughs> not by weapon. So that, you see, uh, this is sort of, I said, a little pain. Otherwise, you see, no danger, killing. So weapon, I really feel in the 20th century, you see, people, I think, use weapon, including nuclear weapon. And people feel more weapon, more military power, as they consider something strength. I think you, the Baltic States, I think you already experienced truth. Power of truth is much more stronger than the power of gun. With Tibetan issue also, I always telling, some kind of sort of struggle between power of gun and the power of truth. We have power of truth. The Chinese military forces, power of gun. For temporary, power of gun is much more stronger. But long run, power of truth is much more stronger. I feel that. 
So now we have to so think seriously. And also I feel the smaller nation, like Baltic state, I think you should make some significant contribution regarding the creation of peaceful world, peaceful century, uh, and this is century of dialogue, I feel. Sometimes I feel smaller nation can make significant contribution rather than big nation. I feel that. And then my second sort of, that is my number one commitment regarding promotion of uh, peaceful world and on the basis of basic human value, that is human compassion. Irrespective of whether religious believer or non-believer, we all come from our mother. We all survived with mother's milk. Mother's milk is the symbol of love. So we all, including today's troublemaker, they also used to come from their mother. <laughs> so basic hum human nature, biologically, uh, firstly, we are social animal. And then, secondly, basic human nature is more compassionate. And they now, according to some scientists, they say constant anger, constant fear is actually eating our immune system. So, uh, the anger not only creates a problem to other, but also very, very harmful for our own healthy body. So now these days I'm telling, now in education, modern education, we should include hygiene of emotion, hygiene of physical in our education there. Now time come, we should uh, include in our modern uh, education uh, the hygiene of emotion. Now today's many world problem is due to lack of uh, hygiene of physical, but hygiene of emotion. So I think today's world, I think there's really a lot of sort of problem about emotional level. Therefore, big nations also sometimes, you see, create some more of the problem. Therefore, uh, now we must pay more attention about our inner value. Sometimes people have the impression the, the subject of uh, love, compassion, forgiveness, these things consider religious matter. So people who have not much interest about religion, they also, you see, uh, not much pay attention about these values. We must make a distinction. The religious belief is something different. But the real message of love, tolerance, forgiveness, uh, these things are we human beings, we are social animal. Each individual's future depends on the rest of the community. So loving kindness is the emotional level bring together, anger pushing. So therefore, basic human nature, more compassionate mind is very, very uh, relevant. Whether accept religion or not, that's a personal matter. So irrespective of whether believer or non-believer, I think seven billion human beings really need more pay attention about our inner value. So, so I always was telling, existing education system is not adequate. Uh, we should include some education about our inner world, not about God or about heaven or these things. No, that's a religious matter. That's an individual business. As a human being, we need, or today, use common sense and the more loving kindness. That's very important. And then, second, my commitment is promotion of religious harmony. All different religious tradition, different philosophy, but all major religious tradition carry the same message: message of love. I often is telling people, all these major religious tradition is human beings' religion. Therefore, 
The all religion carry basic human value. That is human compassion. Okay. In the philosophical fields, there's big differences. Basically, theistic religion all believe there is God, creator. The non-theistic religion, no God, no creator, but rather self-creation. These are the uh, theistic, non-theistic religion, mainly in India, over 3,000 years before Buddha, Buddhism was developed. The India's religion is a self-creation. Therefore, training of one's own mind becomes very important. Therefore, in over 3,000 years in India, the practice of shamatha meditation and the practice of vipassana analytical meditation. These are in India. I think over three to four thousand years already developed. You see, this shows since there is no creator, so all the, everything depends on ourselves. So training of mind is very important. So India's the because of Sanjay philosophy, there are two. One believe creator God, one believe no God. And then Jain philosophy, no God. And then Buddha, Buddhism, also no God, no creator. The, whether you call soul or self, no beginning, no beginning, no end. So therefore, you see, these are uh, non-theistic religion. So in philosophical field, big differences. But all different philosophy, uh, their main aim is to promote human deeper value, that's human compassion. So like that, so my number two commitment is try to promote religious harmony. I have full conviction. Look, India, over 3,000 years, all these different religious traditions lived together. Today also, now India, over one billion populated nation. And there are problems, but as far as religious harmony is there. So therefore, I think India should send more clear message to Middle East or Afghanistan, this area. Religious harmony is very possible. So that's my uh, second commitment. Then third, I am Tibetan. So Tibetan people trust me. So therefore, mm, I have to sort of, what is it? Kasuda, ka, ka. Oh, I mean, keep concern about Tibet. The, as far as political matter, resp political responsibility, since 2011, I totally retired. Not only myself retired, but also, is a four-century-old tradition. Dalai Lama institution automatically become head of both temporal and spirituality. Now that formally, officially cease. So I declare. Uh, sometimes I feel uh, this sort of because of dualistic way, dualistic responsibility. Now start by fifth Dalai Lama. So if fifth Dalai Lama come, whether he support me or not, I doubt. But there's no danger. He's reappearing because of reappear. No danger. So I have to. So I decided. So, so therefore, now my main sort of concern regarding Tibet is ecology inside Tibet. Tibet, people usually use described as a sort of roof of the world. So some my uh, friend, some Chinese ecologist, uh, so they he found effect from. Tibetan plateau to global warming. What's the Kazuta? Same sort of the effect as much as South Pole, North Pole. So he described Tibetan plateau is third pole. So the global level, the taking care about Tibetan ecology is very important. Then, obviously, all major rivers, Yellow River, Mekong River, 
and then Brahmaputra, and then Ganges. All these major rivers come from Tibet. So some from northern Tibet, the Kasa Chuti, Kasa Changdong, Changdong, Changdong. So some river like Ganges, Brahmaputra, mainly from central Tibet, and the Yangtze River, and then the Mekong River, mainly northern part of Tibet. So in any way, on these rivers, I think over billion human, popula human population's life depend on this river. Now, they, due to global warming, the, the resources of water now really uh, getting some problem. So we really need special care to preserve these waters, the glaciers, glaciers in Tibetan Plateau. So that's regarding the Tibetan problem. I fully committed, but a political matter, I already also completely retired, as I mentioned earlier. Then, uh, with Tibetan refugee. Inside Tibet, I think a lot of damage about the Tibetan uh, culture. And there is really sort of some restriction in learning Tibetan. These are short-sighted and short-sighted political-minded people carrying this kind of policy. That's unnecessary. I think regarding the Tibetan problem, more suppression, more resistance. It's quite logical. So the, our approach, since I retired, but our political leadership through election, he also fully committed about our way of approach, Tibetan issue, middle way of approach, not seeking independence, but remain people short of China. And Chinese constitution uh, gives some sort of certain right to those minority. These should implement fully like that. So that's regarding Tibet. Then for the commitment, any Indian here? Oh, one, one Indian there. OK. So one Indian. Oh, so actually, my fourth commitment is try to revive of ancient Indian knowledge. All our knowledge comes from India. So 8th century, or 7th century, particularly 8th century, one Nanada master, Shandar Rakshita, he invited to Tibet by Tibetan emperor. He introduced Buddhism according to Nalanda tradition, Sanskrit tradition. So we, over a thousand years, we Tibetan uh, carry seriously his instruction. So we study Buddhist philosophy. I think now, today, I think uh, a Tibetan, I think really only Tibetan preserved Nalanda tradition intact, like that. And then also, it become now very clear, Tibetan language is the best language to explain about the sophisticated philosophy and logic, these things. So, so I, I really feel uh, for sort of, sort of the benefit to humanity, as I mentioned earlier, when we're passing through some kind of crisis of emotion at that such period, our knowledge, uh, how to tackle our emotion, how to tackle our mind. As in Tibetan tradition, from Nalanda tradition, we say we quite rich and practical. As a result, number of scientists, well-known scientists, they really showing genuine interest and appreciation uh, about Tibetan or knowledge, or psychology, or logic, or these things. So uh, today, so the brain specialist, 
mainly from America and also from Europe, uh, say, when we uh, discuss about brain movement, then discussion reaches deeper, deeper, deeper. Then, you see, their knowledge is limited. Our knowledge, brain, mind, go together. Uh, in the West, you see, the psychology, they mainly refer four sensorial mind. No, no, five, five sensorial sort of mind, not main mind. And then, sensorial level, there's no connection of practice of shamatha, practice of vipassana. All these practice related with uh, sixth mind. So since, you see, the uh, knowledge about sixth mind is very limited, so then it's difficult like that. As far as the sensorial level, sort of consciousness, I think animal, more stronger, like elephant, they are smell, I think, much stronger than, than we human beings, as the, as the ability of smell. And also seeing some bird from distance without a binocular survey, oh, they can see. So, eye consciousness, ear consciousness, nose consciousness, in Karsatyuti, taste consciousness, and sort of touch conscious, consciousness, animal stronger than a human being. But the sixth mind, our brain is very, very marvelous. So therefore, you see, we now, time come, we should pay more attention about sixth mind, how to train our mind, because emotion mainly is related with sixth mind. So the information about sixth mind, even language to explain this, very detailed, thoroughly available, only Tibetan language. Okay. So, now some questions. I should Yoshiva in Tenyibi, Spaskita. Dabar mes organizuosim taip, kad bus savo noriai su dviem mikrofonais ir man tiesiog reikės, aš rodysiu, kam paduoti tą mikrofoną, savo noriai paduos, o tuomet galima užduoti klausimus lietuviškai, mūsų vertė išves jo šventenybėj, o jo šventenybė atsakys angliškai. Gerai, aš norėčiau matyti savo norius, kur jie yra. Čia ir čia, gerai. Tai prašau, matau ranka pakelta, čia priekį aš perdodu jam. Jūs būsit antra, gerai, paruoškit savo klausimą, gerai. Aš matau jūs, I see you, ok. Gerai. Prašau. Labą dieną jūsų šventinime. Klausimas mano toks yra. Kas yra dvasiniai tradicijai, dvasiniam keliai mokytojo ir mokinio santykis? Ką reiškia mokytojas mokiniai ir mokinys? Ir atvirkščiai. Laudra, laudra. Garsiau, garsiau. Garsiau. relationship on spiritual path, uh, what is um, important in the relationship between the teacher and the student in, on spiritual path? Oh. Very important. I think firstly, spiritual, I think two levels. One, spirituality, I feel, with belief. That's related with religion. Then another sort of spirituality, without belief, simply, you see, uh, use our intelligence and common sense, then becoming more spiritual-minded. According to Indian tradition, the, there is one word, also the uh, secular ethics, and then another word, something like universal, 
universal ethics, like that. The, according to Indian tradition, respect all religions and also respect non-believer. So that's quite wise. So it's very relevant to today's world because the out of seven billion human beings, uh, one billion non-believer. So we should not exclude these non-believer, one billion non-believer. So if we uh, teach about spiritual value, deeper human value, uh, on the basis of faith, then these people will not pay much attention. So now we, you need universal sort of uh, moral ethics or universal ethics like that. Ah. Hmm? So, so therefore, this spirituality, I feel two levels: one with belief, one without belief. Just use common sense. Okay, uh, no, no, no need to translate. You already know. Yeah. So, then, then all these. Yes, that's the main. What's the main point? Marve, tamare. What? What a further question? Student, what? It was about student. Oh, oh yes. As then you see the teaching about inner value, compassion. The teacher. The other subject, like mathematics or some other sort of science or these things, you see, you simply you see, explain the knowledge level. Then the spiritual level, warm heartedness, compassion. These uh, not just mere words, but action. So the teacher must, uh, te when the teacher teaching these inner values, the teacher themselves should practice these things. Then show student the deeper value on these also practice. Then, you know, example, when you ex explain, in case, you know, if you explain about tolerance, about compassion, but teacher himself, full of anger, how can teach? <laughs> then I think student may laugh at you. Oh, he teach us about compassion, but he, he or she, uh, they themselves is full of anger. So therefore, the subject to this inner value is concerned. The teacher themselves should practice, should get some experience then accordingly teach student, then student really bring conviction. Oh, our teacher, they themselves practice these things. They found some value, some inner sort of the peace. So therefore, mm, our, our teacher really out of sense of concern of their well-being now teach this subject. So they teach a student so they listen with conviction. That's very important. Next question. Kitas klausimas. Jūsų šventinybė labai ačiū, kad atvažiavote. Turiu klausimą, kaip mum po jūsų paskaitos šiandien visiems išeiti? Ve. Kie? O, 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 yes, yes. Kas? Visiems išeiti labiau mylintiems ir atjaučiantiems. Duokit kokią paprastą praktiką, kad mes visi taptume geresni. I, I am not expecting <laughs> oh, through my uh, sort of talk some change. I don't believe. Now this, just, you see, uh, introduce you all in order to become happy individual. This inner value is something relevant and something important. So you should pay more attention. Try to read uh, some of these sort of kazoda, uh, kazoda, uh, try to learn more information. 
including some scientific sort of uh, books, mention these things. And then perhaps uh, my own writing. Some maybe some useful. So buy more my book. <laughs> <laughs> so and then I think they, this talk, you see, you already recorded. I think some recorded. So you say, think, think, think by yourself. More constantly. Then now there's three levels of knowledge. Number one knowledge is knowledge from hearing. This moment, you get some kind of knowledge from hearing or from reading. That's very superficial. Then that subject, now you should think more constantly and uh, analyze. Then second level of knowledge, knowledge with conviction, come. That now become very sound. Now something like compassion is it through uh, constant analyze uh, and your own some experiment, then you get conviction. Now that then make familiarize day by day, week by week, month by month, even decade by decade. Then uh, raw emotion, red eventually become more ripened, red, like that. So it takes time, all constant effort. My own experience, now some of these sort of point which originally come from Nalanda, we familiarize these things. My own case, over 50, 60 years, I think, 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 uh, and also later discuss with the scientist. Then uh, there is really, and also according to my own experience, then there is uh, really, you see, develop full conviction like that. So uh, study, uh, think more seriously, constantly then you can expect some change. Uh, I think that after this lecture, uh, if you at least you keep more normal person, it's good, okay. But after this lecture, and outside shouting, fighting, that's not good. <laughs> okay, next question. Dario, parachute, mm -hmm. Ethan. Mm -hmm. You have a question? Uh, hello. <laughs> Class uh, Madoso uh, English In English, yes. yes. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for coming here and sharing your wisdom with us. Uh, my question is regarding politics and uh, mindfulness or consciousness. Uh, my question goes to you: Why did you retire from politics? And having instability, war, refugee crisis, climate change, and many more at this time in the world. Is the society, by just being mindful, can change anything? Or do we need more political participation and tackling you know, those important things? So my question goes, why did you retire from politics? Since my childhood, I already noticed the Tibetan government system. Uh, you see, there are many faults. There are many faults. So I often, you see, feel, oh, something we must change. And I took the responsibility to the government, I think in 1950. Then, I think 52, 
I already started reform committee to change, but it become uh, it's difficult to find some sort of resistance, and mainly Chinese authority. They want reform according to their own way. So if Tibet carries some reform, it naturally becomes more suitable. So that might be might become hindrance about their own so reform, including class struggle. So I not sort of stay successfully so sort of practice these things. And then fifty nine escaped. In sixty we start work for democratization. Then eventually, uh, the Dalai Lama institution last 400 years, as I mentioned, as I mentioned, since fifth Dalai Lama, Dalai Lama institution automatically become head of both temple and spirituality. So now that I feel undemocratic. So I resigned from political sort of responsibility and then the elected political leadership we achieved. So I always feel proud that not only my own sort of retirement, but also as I mentioned earlier, the Dalai Lama institution itself, you see, now no longer sort of legitimate right to carry political responsibility. Because I really, these institution, the, some religious leaders institution, I think are very much relevant, re related with feudal system. Now feudal system, no future. I think if you look past the history uh, in the Arab world, and also some extent in India also, you see, the most of these sort of war related with uh, king or queen or religious leader. So I feel war is some connection with feudal system. Now today's world, democratic system. So the country theoretically ruled by people, not one individual. The feudal system, the individual have the full power, then give order and war. In truly democratic country, I don't think, you see, uh, that happened. Each soldier, they also have the right. So I don't think in order to save one individual's power, willing sacrifice their own life, I don't think like that. So therefore, I retired from political responsibility. And then uh, I totally devoted to serving because of the humanity, as I mentioned earlier, like that. So that's now the questioner. <laughs> Yes. Please stand up. Okay. I want to know you. You from which country? One of the African state. Uh, you're right because I got a lot of sun. Right. <laughs> I'm Ethiopian. Ethiopian. Yes. Oh, right. 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 Good. So, now, the second part which you didn't answer is yes, the role part. of society second, second. and consciousness. Hmm. The second part I already touched. Today's world passing through some kind of crisis of emotion. Oh. That also, you see, mainly 
the respons responsible existing education system. Education, modern education system from Europe. Uh, I think about 200 years ago, you see, they, till, till then, I feel, I'm not historian, but I feel they previously education carried by monastery or nunnery. Then eventually science and technology develop. Then it become necessary, some separate education institution uh, uh, created. So then at that time, I think the religious matter carried by monks or nuns. And then newly developed knowledge about science and technology these carried by separate newly developed education institution. At that time, maybe more balance. Now eventually, the religious in influence in the society reduced. Then the separate newly developed education institution itself now should carry the both responsibility. Uh, taking care about our brain and uh, taking care about our warm heartedness. So now education, uh, because when education, separate education institutes started only concerned about external thing, material thing. So existing education system is very much oriented about material value. So through this education, then create materialistic culture, materialistic life. So we really need now education should include, as I mentioned earlier, hygiene of emotion. Hygiene of emotion, then, you see, they have to learn the system of our emotion, how to tackle emotion. Not based on faith, but based on reasoning, scientific finding. Now, for example, quantum physics, very useful in order to reduce our emotion. Now, already some quantum physicists, they already sort of noticed that, like that. So, now, second question. Ne next question, next please. Question, please. The, give a microphone. Uh, Your Holiness, I would like to ask you about two terms which you are using quite often in your speeches. Uh, modern values and universal values. Where is the difference between these two terms? And when universal values became modern and why? Hmm? Modern value, I think mainly refer about material value. Human value, I think both. We have this physical. You see, we need facility for physical sort of well-being. And then at the same time, we also need uh, some knowledge about our inner world. That's existing modern education is lacking. So therefore, uh, this is believer or non-believer, irrespective, Easterner or Westerner, uh, or southerner, northerner, all our human beings have the emotion. So uh, that's universal. I feel that modern education is part of that, not adequate, not complete. Okay. Ne next question. Please. Your turn. Yes. His Holiness, my name is Darek Kinasz. I'm from Poland. Hmm? Poland? Yeah. Oh. And I was waiting to ask this question more than a decade. Oh. <laughs> uh, Professor Mies, he was the fight for your Nobel Prize, His Holiness, and Kandor Impochan, they emphasized me that I should request you about the, an appointment. This is my question. <laughs> uh, so, so, who? Professor Mies. Yes. Oh. He passed away in 2007, and Kandor Rinpoche. Kandor I see. Huh? 
And this is why uh, I just would like to ask if it will be possible to, uh, if you allow me to make the, an appointment, please. He's on us. No, not much time. Now, tomorrow, here, day after tomorrow, leaving to Latvia, Marve. Huh? Can be India, doesn't matter where his holiness are, we India. just appear, doesn't matter, yes. Okay, always welcome. <laughs> always but, welcome. Yes. But I have in the past difficulties to do this. This is why I'm doing like personal this. I see. Oh, I have no problem. Come to India and then. Oh. No, no, I was in India, His Holiness, quite I long, see. and I, I was see. trying, yes. This is why I asked if His Holiness allowed okay. me to make the appointment, I came to India, no oh. problem. Okay, there's no problem, yes. Thank you very much. India, okay. right? Okay, okay. Thank okay. you, His Holiness. Thank you. Next question from that side. You, you were Anton. You, you, uh, yes. Uh, where? Uh, Thank you very much for he, for being here in Lithuania. Uh, Mintis, The main sort of point is the ancient Indian very, very rich psychology. Uh, See, before Buddha come, already over 3,000 years, uh, so in India, the, because you see the, uh, the understanding or knowledge about emotion uh, there, so the concept of shamatha and concept of vipassana and analytical meditation already developed in India. No. So nowadays, uh, now in India itself, uh, as I men mentioned earlier, the modern education is introduced by Britisher. <laughs> so modern India, I think, completely negative about this value. So therefore, I'm trying to revival this knowledge. So uh, the Tibetan language, before Buddhism, uh, Buddhist translation start. Tibetan language is very primitive. Uh, while translation coming, translation work, new word develop. So now today, the, I think among, I think several hundred different language on this planet, I think the Tibetan language is the most closest with Sanskrit word. So therefore, now today, in Tibetan language, the explanation about psychology, about philosophy, about logic, uh, I think uh, we can express precisely. So modern Hindi, no hope. You come from India. Hmm? Oh. Uh, then English or French or Spanish, no hope <laughs> in, in this subject. Like you said, Tibetan language, the subject about modern science, the mod modern economy, these things, Tibetan hopeless because not 
sort of utilize. In these sort of ancient Indian psychology, ancient Indian sort of knowledge about logic in these things, the Tibetan word, you see, use through centuries. So therefore, uh, today I found Tibetan language is the best language to explain more precisely these things. So then, uh, not necessarily to learn Tibetan language, but now more and more translations now coming. So, if you have some interest, you see, you can pay more attention for, as I mentioned earlier, to see so these translations. Now in Chinese translation, English translation, French translation, German translation now, quite a Spanish translation also now coming. Uh, more and more translation. So you can, you can learn through these books. Thank you. Thank you. Kitas Klaus Samastan. Hello. Yes, hello. I'm Leonard from Germany and I want to ask you a question about... Please, please raise your hand. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Yes. And keep uh, one hand. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, yes. I want to ask you a question about um, how we can manage to. Uh, Buddha said the, the one uh, one truth that's realizing that there is suffering and uh, how it's possible to get more people even realize that they're suffering about animals and being vegetarian and stuff, because um, for me, myself, it took me 21 years to realize that animals are suffering and I should not eat them. And are you vegetarian or vegan? <laughs> yeah. Very good question. Now, I can uh, see. Uh, Buddha's own time, uh, let's see, uh, some Buddha's teaching emphasis vegetarianism should not eat meat. Uh, but Vinaya's rule, say you should not take any meat purposely killed for you and meat for that animal or already available in the market. Uh, no more, more because of the prohibition, right? Like that. And now today's World, Buddhist world, Chinese Buddhist, many of them very strict vegetarian. Sri Lanka, Burma, Thailand, uh, and Tibet also. We are not very strict vegetarians. But in the meantime, uh, many, uh, for example, in India, all our big monastic institutions, they are common kitchen. Now, since I think over more than 10 years, they all serve vegetarian food. No longer any non-vegetarian food. Uh, and all Tibetan settlement in India, right from the beginning, we not accept any help for fishery, poultry, and uh, pickery. So we uh, individual Tibetan, yes, up to them, but generally, you see, we always try to promote vegetarianism. In, in the past, the northern part of Tibet, no vegetation, uh, no fruit, so entirely depend on animal product. That's practical, like that. So my own case, uh, since 19... Uh, no, in 1964, I uh, gave up eating meat, vegetarian. Then next uh, 20 months, I remain strict vegetarian. Then uh, I developed the problem about because or jaundice, or jaundice problem, hepatite problem. So whole my body become yellow, uh, and nails is become yellow. So later I jokingly describing. At that time, I truly become living Buddha. 
yellow, whole body yellow. <laughs> Not through spiritual practice, but illness. So then the uh, Tibetan physician, as well as Kazajoti, allopathic sort of physician, they advised me now better to, uh, I said, to go original sort of my uh, the diet. But then, occasionally, some non-vegetarian food, but my kitchen usually serving vegetarian food. So like that. So, so here is a uh, contradiction. I promotion. I promote vegetarianism. I myself essentially remain non-vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> so according to Vinaya, uh, Vinaya Sutra, you see no restriction. And Langa Avatara, such as Langa, Langa Avatara Sutras, Kazoda Sutra, mentioned uh, strict, strictly vegetarian, like that. Now today's world, Buddhist world, there are vegetarians, non-vegetarians, like that. Okay, next question. Thank you. Hello, Namaste and Pranam. I'm from India. Hmm? Uh, uh, this question is about the student life. So usually what we go through is that when we have time, we don't have money. And when we have money, then we don't have any time left. So how will you suggest us or advise us to make everything in equilibrium, like everything normal? I think without money, difficult to carry our life. So, money, very important. Hmm? So, India, I think material development, economy, also now, Kasoda, develop. These are very important. Even Buddha, you see, he carry begging bowl. <laughs> so, if there's no, no family who put some food, and then how to manage Buddha himself, <laughs> difficult. <laughs> so these are practical. But then, as a materialistic life, think only money, 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 money. Uh, and then try to become a millionaire, and then still try to become billionaire. These are not much, I think, uh, because of the reasonable <coughs> content certain sort of limited economy sort of matter. Uh, I think the world, uh, when we were in Tibet, we learned capitalism and socialism, these things. So capitalists only think money, money, money. Uh, no limit, just go, go, go. And become billionaire. I think the billionaire themselves not necessarily happy. One occasion, I visited some big university in America. The student number, I think, uh, 40,000, 40, 50,000. The chancellor, highly educated. Without that, become impossible to become chancellor. OK. Uh, and then I asked his sort of salary. I think two, two million or something. So, materially, is everything okay? But as a human being, we spend some time. So then, after sort of exchange, few nice words. Then, when he explained about his real sort of mental state, a lot of worry. Then I discuss. So I share my own experience. But these way of thinking. So then, after our meeting, then his lifestyle completely changed. Before that, in his office as a chancellor, in the office, he preferred to remain lonely. After our meeting, he became much active like that. So money 
fail to bring in a peace. So, money need for physical uh, comfort. But meantime, some knowledge about mental peace, that also is very necessary. So combine together. So you as an Indian, the, I often used to tell when we have some meeting with scientists, including psychologists, uh, mainly it's the four fields, cosmology, neurobiology, physics, nuclear physics, and quantum physics, uh, and then psychology. So psychology is concerned. The, I often used to express the modern psychology compare ancient Indian psychology. The modern psychology looks like a kindergarten level. Indian psychology highly developed. So now, as I mentioned earlier, I think you as an Indian, traditionally, our guru. So please, our guru, pay more attention about past your knowledge, about mind. I think the, this knowledge is part of ancient Indian knowledge. So in India, uh, this is simply revival of their ancient knowledge. In the West, it's something different. A Judo-Christian background, so the faith is sufficient. Faith is very important. Uh, according to Indian tradition, uh, the practice of shamatha, practice of vipassana, they are. So the uh, knowledge about whole system of mind is very essential. Now, this knowledge traditionally come from religious text. Now, today, we have to consider these are academic subjects, not religious subjects. Like that. Thank you. And the last question, please. You. Uh, hi there. Uh, Your Excellency, uh, how are you doing? Uh, I'm a little bit nervous, but whatever. Uh, so you mentioned in your talk uh, that, oh God, my hand is shaking. Uh, you mentioned in your talk that we should strive to remove all problems in the world. Well, what's going to keep us pushing forward, us as humanity? What is going to strive us to become better if there are no more problems in the world? As I mentioned earlier, our aim should be this century, 21st century, should be central peace. And in order to achieve central peace, you see, the problem, different opinion, different interest always there. So whenever you see some sort of differences uh, causing some conflict, then we must solve these differences uh, through dialogue, through talk, not use force. Uh, that, I think, uh, so uh, we should try to create uh, this century, century of dialogue. Now that, I think, education field in classroom, then family level, then community level, I think we should practice whenever some problems happen to dialogue, to talk, uh, not turn back, but meet them and talk like that. So I think the, this, the spirit of dialogue should become part of our life. Then the whole society, through education, if we uh, create that kind of, sort of, because of that, uh, concept or that kind of habit, then leader come from that kind of society also become much willing to talk, to solve, to dialogue. At present, the whole society is it too much sort of emphasis, we and they, my family, their family, and too much competition, uh, too much jealousy. So the leader come from that kind of society, naturally, their way of thinking, same way. So I think we, through education, family level, uh, 
And in the class, I think we should develop the concept of dialogue. I think one day, I think we should, we should have, you see, the student in the classroom uh, study about the value of dialogue, so that when a student returns their home, if parent some quarrel, then student should sort of say, oh, this is not right, uh, should solve through talk. If parent about to divorce, then should advise by student, oh, this is not right, dialogue, dialogue, dialogue. I think dialogue should become part of our life. Then gradually creates the whole society, that kind of habit. That's the way this is beginning of the 21st century, uh, 2018, my way, 2018. So remaining few decades, I think if we start work now, I think uh, and after 20, 30 years, I think the world can be more better world, more peaceful world. So this world uh, take time. So we must start now. This is my feeling. I cannot see the peaceful world. But you, a younger generation, whose age below 30, 30 years or 20 years, you are the generation of the 21st century. If we start effort now through education, you will see a better world, compassionate world, whenever some problem face through dialogue. OK. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, uh, the people and you know, the audience, uh, if you uh, feel some interest, then think more seriously this point. Then, uh, if you feel some sort of uh, useful, then practice, implement by yourself and then share with your friends. From one single person, share another 10 people who you have some close connection. Then each, each one try to share their friends. So that way, from one person, 10 person, from 10 person, 100 person, from 100 person, 1,000 person, and eventually 10,000, 100,000, go like that. That's the way to change our society, not through prayer. I'm Buddhist. My daily, pra daily sort of practice, prayer also there. But uh, my sort of prayer brings some inner peace myself. But through prayer, bring world peace, I don't believe. I don't think. <laughs> if we have opportunity meeting with Jesus Christ, or Muhammad, or Buddha, ask them, please bring peace on this planet. I think most probably they answer, they, 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 they sort of response. Or who creates violence? Not Buddha, not Jesus Christ, not Muhammad. So we human beings cry because of created this problem. So logically, human beings have the responsibility to solve these things, not through prayer. OK, I think practical level, I think uh, believers, I think through centuries believe peace, 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 nothing happened. <laughs> so now, our responsibility uh, in order to create a peaceful world, firstly, we should create inner peace use our common sense, our logical approach, not through just a blind faith. Okay, thank you.
Thank you.